one hour later. What the other way? Oh. Hey, I'm Jesse, and over in the edit suite right there is Will, and together we are Top Jaw. Now this year, the world has taken a bit of a pause, not by choice, but lots of us have decided with that time to learn a new skill. Many of us have chosen sourdough, so Will and I thought it would be a great idea to make some films with some absolute sourdough dons. We have Matt from Bread Ahead teaching us his no-need loaf, and we have sourdough Sophia teaching us her beginner's loaf. Now, I tried to make it look like I knew what I was doing. I think I modeled through. There we go. All in our quest to become master bakers. Are you a master baker, Will? Huh? Take that as a yes. We've got a couple of finishing touches to make, and then, when we're ready, <laughs> I'm with Sophia aka Sourdough Sophia, follow on Instagram, at Sourdough Sophia. We all follow her, my mum follows her. Um, Will's actually filming a sourdough course with Sophia at the moment, and that's why we're here. Thank you very much for helping us out. No worries. Sophia's gonna give us a crash course today in a beginner sourdough loaf, because that's exactly what we need. Okay, so Sophia, I know we're gonna do a lot of business in a short period of time, but what have we got in store today? So we're gonna do an entire process of how to make a sourdough bread from scratch. And I'm gonna teach you exactly what you need to do. From how to make the dough, to basically bulk fermentation, folding, shaping, and then of course baking. Like an educational resource film. <laughs> Question for you, what makes it a beginner's loaf? So we're not gonna use that much water, which means we're gonna make a dough that's not so hard to use, okay? You're gonna be able to shape it well and not lose yourself in the middle of the dough because it's like a whole big mass of porridge. We're gonna try and make it really nice and simple so that you can actually work on it. Ordinarily, this will take three days? Probably about two days. So you've got your sourdough starter ready in the morning. By lunchtime, you're gonna then make your dough. Towards the evening, you're gonna shape your dough. And then the next morning, you're going to bake it. So it's about a two day process. So we're gonna have a complete comprehensive guide, each step from start to finish. That's right. So I know, so and we're going to do it together, so don't worry, you're not alone. And whenever you have questions, fire away. This yeah. looks buoyant and lively. Ooh. It's nice, huh? Mmm. Kind of smells like egg mayo. <laughs> <laughs> it does, it does. Will, smell that. When it's ready to be used, it looks a bit like a crater, like a moon surface. That's what we want. We want nice bubbles. We want it to have tripled in size. Double is great, but triple is much better than double because that really shows you that you've got a vigorous, healthy starter and one that can be used to really lift up your dough. And so you've been feeding this equal parts, yeah. 100 and 100. Yeah, that's it. Well, it's and it's I always take out a small part of my starter into a new jar and then feed it my water and my flour to then lift it up again. So we make the beginner's dough. Okay. This is what we teach you. You don't keep calling it beginners. No, but obviously it's an advanced it's dough. Fancy. You're okay. totally advanced right now. <laughs> no, okay, cool. Beginner, beginner batch. Level one. Okay. Right? And you're going to start with flour. And yep. what have we got here? We've got strong white flour and we've got wholemeal flour. Any idea why I use the two? No. No? <laughs> so I use strong white flour because that's the main part of my dough. That's the part that's really strong and gives me a really nice strong scaffolding. Yep. Okay, that's the stuff that contains a lot of gluten. That gives it flavour, is it? And that one gives it flavour. Nice. And that's yeah. why I can we see add. where you're going with it. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> He's bold with that, isn't he? Yeah. Much bolder than me. How accurate do we have to be? Very. Right. The sourdough baking is all about controlling the variables as much as you possibly can. Okay. Let's try. Okay. 50 grams of this one. Just 50? Yes. This is only to finish it off. We just want to give it flavour, like a you said. A little bit of flavour. Yeah, that's right. We're adding 350 grams of water. Stop. That's it. Well done. This is the part which we call our auto liz. And okay. essentially we're just combining our flour and our water. Auto liz for me. A-U-T-O-L-Y-S-E. If you take that off the scales, and then yep. we're going to mix that in nicely until it's all incorporated with our hand. You basically try and keep one hand free, 
That's the one hand you want to guide your bowl with and the other hand to really nicely stir it in. Right, like a magic mix. You're doing the movement that a mixer would do. Um, and then you just scrunch it in like that and try and scrape up all the rest of the flour until you can't see any more flour. There we go. And how do you know where that's done? All incorporated, no flour in sight. Perfect. <laughs> nice one. And then try and scrape everything off. And then once you've done that, you're going to go around the bowl just to scrape it all up. And now you want to take your shower cap and cover it over. No air getting in there. Not too much anyway. We want to try and keep the top surface moist. Because if, if you put a towel on there, definitely it will dry out a little bit. Okay, because it gets it? that kind of skin yeah, on top. Yeah, and you don't want that because you're going to incorporate that skin over and over again. It just makes it a little bit messy in the end. Cool, so we're going to leave this now for minimum 20 minutes water Liz, or up to two hours if you have the time. What happens is the water and the flowers now getting acquainted and we're forming gluten. Right, cool. That's what's happening. It's a little chemical process inside that happens now. All fueled by the starter. Not yet, because we haven't got a starter in there yet. Good point. <laughs> There's a little cap off? Yes. Oh, hey! <laughs> and then you're going to put the uh, starter in first, 100 grams of it. Oh, I'm doing it right? Wow, yeah, look at all that. That is really like... <laughs> Ooh it's, jimmy, a bit jimmy, like jimmy. it's a bit like thick Egg mayo. whipping cream type thing. <laughs> yep. Off you go. Perfect. So it just needs to be covered, because then we're going to put the salt in now. Okay. See, this is the confusing thing. <laughs> so we've put 450 grams of flour, white flour, yeah. 50 grams of wholemeal flour, yeah. 350 grams of water, yeah. 100 grams of starter. Yeah. Why did we put in 12.5 grams of salt? So it's basically 2.5% of our total amount of flour. And that right. just means it's just the right amount essentially to tighten our gluten nicely, to help us work it nicely but also to give us all of those nice, delicious flavours, salted and nice and enough, and give us a nice brown crust nice. in the end. Once it's folded in nicely, we're gonna pop it on the table and get it work out. A good old slap and fold. We're gonna put our bowl on the side, remove the scales, and then we're gonna tip out the bowl onto here. The slap and fold works quite easily. I'll show you a couple of times and then yep. we, you can do it. So essentially what you do is you lift up the dough like this and then fold it over itself. And then you lift it up again and then fold it over itself. But you're going to do this a lot more vigorous, like that. Slap it out and then, and then fold yes, it Yes, nice. That. And then you just keep going so and you're going to get faster up. and faster. And then yeah. Don't be too... Um, too perfect about it. You can just keep going essentially until you get a nice cohesive of mass. Oh look, we're getting a little bit of a formation there now. So, so it's gonna be a while until essentially it will form a really nice cohesive mass. I took too long on it. The table took some of the time. I guess we're trying to making gluten babies or something. So we're trying to develop gluten. We're gonna try and incorporate more and more air into it for our gluten pockets to essentially trap the air in. Okay, so we've and yeah. we're encouraging the chemical process. You're an absolute monster. Look at me. We'll give... Oh! Make little air pockets. Try to develop gluten. Most of all, not letting the dough be the boss of me. This is very short still. You haven't yet connected enough gluten, so it's not developed enough oh, yet. Blimey. You just keep going. Come together really nice. <laughs> what the? You see how you've really made it come together, but now we just kind of want to finish it off a little bit. You see, and it's really nice. Nice. You are too much. Well done. Okay. Now just take a scraper a little bit, pop it together, and then we're gonna put it inside the bowl. So, Jesse, this is entering the bulk fermentation stage now. Which means essentially it's going to do the bulk of its fermentation inside the bowl, just yep. like the word says. And this is now highly temperature sensitive. So the warmer it is, outside or with the water that we've used, the less time it will take. And the colder it is, and the colder our water was, the more time it will take to ferment. How do you know when it's fermented enough? Okay, so we're looking about at a 30% increase. And we're obviously going to do our folds in between now, every half an hour for the first yep. two hours. But we will start noticing that our dough will change from, well, currently quite a sticky, a little bit extensible, but not really much is going on in there. Looks a bit more like Play-Doh. Mm -hmm. To later on a really airy, cloudy dough that's really light. It will feel really light in comparison. 
and it should have increased by 30% in volume. That's when we know. Okay. It's about a third bigger. Yeah. Nice and playful. Yeah. Okay, put his little capper on. Yeah. So now the process is we have about two hours of folding. Every half hour, four folds, <laughs> four folds. And then a total bulk fermental, oh my God, bulk fermenting period of about four and a half hours, given that the temperature in there right now is 24 and a half degrees. Okay, so it's been half an hour for the bulk fermentation and we're gonna do the first fold. It's really stretchy. It's really Elastic. Stretchy. Yeah. But can you see how when you're pulling it too far, it starts ripping the gluten. Yeah. And at the beginning, that's absolutely fine. Gluten can recover. Towards the end, you don't want to do that. You want to become more and more careful with how you do it because when you rip gluten strands towards the end of bulk fermentation, they can't recover anymore. And that will be something that's present in your crumb in the end, okay. if you're a perfectionist like that. One hour later. It's that SpongeBob thing, isn't it? Yeah. Why is this more buoyant now? So fermentation has started. And as part of fermentation, what happens is that we produce CO2. And that rises it up and bubbles it up. And so now we want to continue building our gluten up and our dough up by giving it another fold. Lift it up and fold it over itself. And then you rotate the bowl and you continue doing that nicely. Yeah, and fold it over itself. And then rotate and do the same thing again. Yeah, whenever you've got dry hands, just uh, wet them again a little bit, you know, so that dough doesn't stick. Yeah. And by stretching it up and essentially folding it over each other, what we're doing is we're building little pockets for our CO2 to be tra trapped in and then essentially we're building up our dough. So you see this bit is still a bit stretchy, whereas another bit might not be. So as, as soon as you can see, it's kind of fighting back a little yeah. bit. Yeah. That's when you stop. Because at the start it was like, Whee! Yes. We've got two more rounds of folding to do. So each half hour, one hour, we're going to be done with our folding and then it's Bannatine time. Perfect. You, can, you don't have to use like a perfect bread made Dutch oven. You can use just a normal home gear if you don't have it at yeah. all. And lots of people have these without even realising yeah. they can use them for bread. Absolutely, they they're perfect. Casseroles. If you can try and use an over one, it's easier to use than a round one because a round one will kind of determine the shape of the loaf a little bit, especially if it's small. I've got a round one. Yeah, but it's fine. It's absolutely fine. It just means that you have to make a round loaf instead of an over loaf yeah. because it probably won't have enough space otherwise. But that's fine. So we are at the shaping stage now. The bar fermentation has finished and I'm going to show Jesse exactly how to do his shaping now. We're going to start with the pre-shape, then followed by a bench rest, and then we're going to go on for the final shape. So we take our hands, right, wet them a little bit. The dough should essentially pull a window pane like this, you see, and not necessarily rip. It will rip eventually, obviously. Okay, but it basically gets super thin. Like so a window pane. That's yeah. when you know that you will have developed your gluten enough. You're kind of teasing it up. Show it off. Oh, no. Yeah, bro, go. that's sick. Well done. Woo! <laughs> it was very um, stretchy. And it's increased in size by about 30%, which is exactly what we're looking out yeah. for. So. So to pre-shape your loaf, essentially you're going to start with a motion that sort of rounds it off. So you want to go underneath it, push it in, and then quickly, really quickly retracting. I'll show you one more time. You go in, you round it, you push it, and then you really quickly retract. Does that make sense? Yeah. And you're kind of going around until you've got a nice plump surface. Oh, yeah. see, That's cool, but you can push it in a little bit more first and then pull it out. Nice. Well done. It's exactly what we want. Very nice move. We just finished off by just doing a couple more. Like that. And now you can see it's starting to really get so plump that at the next stage it will probably rip. That's right. And it's kind of really nice and comes back, yeah. you know? <laughs> Woo! Yeah. Yeah. So now we're going to leave this to rest for about half an hour and then it's ready As to is be. bench rest. Yes, that's right. So now this is gonna have its little bench rest for about half an hour, 40 minutes. It will get a skin because it is open to the air, but that's kind of good. It's gonna help us with the shaping the next stage. You know in hospital when they give you yeah. something to piss in? Wood pulp. We've got two types of banneton. You either got the round ones or like the oval long ones. It's night, Duncan. They're going to use the other ones. So we're going to final shape now. Yeah. And it's essentially been resting on the bench. Any idea why? Or what, it, what does it look like? Describe it to me. It's got a bit you know, spread out a little bit. Yeah. But it's still kept its nut shape. 
Yeah. It's nice and rounded. It's not pancakey, is it? It's still no, a little bit. No, yeah. Yeah. Sort of structure. Well, that's what we're looking for. We don't want it to really go flat like a pancake. That would be in sign of overproving, possibly, um, or underproving even if it's just not got any structure at all. Okay. This is what we kind of want. We want it to be nice and flexible again. So fun to touch. <laughs> I know. So what we're going to do is we're going to go under with our knife, yep. really fast, and then pop it over upside down with the skin side up. That's right. <laughs> okay. No. That's fine. That's fine. And then flip it over. And flip it over. Okay, now what you're going to do is, you see it's kind of oval right now. Mm -hmm. Turn it sort of... Landscape. Yep, landscape, thank you. And then what you're going to do is you're going to pull out those two ends and overlap them. Yeah, that's enough. One and the other. Putting up a little bit first, over, kind of towards here. And then we're going to roll it tightly up. Okay. Okay, you do the end. And now all you need to do is take your knife and push it sort of back and forth a little bit like that. Just to sort of increase the tension a little bit, you see? Scrape underneath from one side, yeah. And then upside down it goes. Nice. Well done. And now the last thing I would do is we're going to give it a quick stitch. And the reason why we do that is because we want to create a little bit more tension. Sometimes you can create small shaping errors, and especially as a beginner, you don't really know perfectly the technique, yeah, and that's normal. That's fine. You can correct that with a little bit of stitching in the end. Super easy. All you need to do is take ends like that and overlap them like this. It's more about stitching it in quick than putting too much more. So this is our shaping process finished. Yep. And now it's in the fridge overnight, ready to bake in the morning. Perfect. You can actually leave it out before you put it in the fridge, especially if it's a slightly colder day. You're going to want to have a tiny increase again, slightly more fermentation at room temperature before you put it in the fridge, because actually fermentation almost stops in the fridge, especially if you have a really cool fridge. So just leave it out for a little more time, maybe half an hour, just to let it relax and really ease into it and then pop it into the fridge. If it's a particularly hot day or it's really hot where you live, about 30 degrees or more, don't do that and put it straight into the fridge. Okay, Will, Will bailed out from that jump, gone down slightly. Okay, you ready? And he's gonna go. Oh. Ow, what? <laughs> that actually. Oh, 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 my arm. Our dough has now been in the fridge for 12 hours, and that's baking time. How long, how long does it stay out of the fridge for? Doesn't, it comes literally out of the oh. fridge and goes straight in the oven, that's All it. Right. We don't need to take it out of the fridge because it literally expands in the oven the so the quickly. Oven. That's it. Oh, okay. God, this is a proper bread Dutch oven. This it's isn't just proper. like a casserole Dutch, Dutch this oven. This is the only one, it's the best one. Okay, I'm glad I just bought one that looks nothing like that. <laughs> You can do it with any, but this is a really, really nice this one. This is the real McCoy. It's made by a bread baker. Right. So it's nice. It's Boy. made by a bread baker. Right. So it's nice. Right. So it's nice. Take off the lid. Yep. And then just place it onto that wooden part as well. Nice one. Well, <laughs> got a loaf that we've been making. <laughs> it's very plump, isn't it? Yeah. Nice. Give it a little tap. A lot of wobble. Plump. It's very plump. But maybe very we just shouldn't shake it too much. Sorry. <laughs> Why polenta, Sophia? So polenta will essentially give you a nice little non-stick surface underneath, so it doesn't stick to your cast iron pot. Right. But also it just gives you nice flavour. Tastes yeah. really nice polenta, especially when it's roasted like that. Tip your bread like this by holding your hands like that. So when you tip it over, you don't immediately let it go, and it doesn't just okay. plonk in. Nice. Okay, so scoring, uh, there's a nice little trick. So you're trying to aim for a half moon shape, like a crescent, nice and deep. Oh God. Yeah, keep going. What? It's a why at that angle? So the angle essentially just gives you a direction for your bread to open up in this, with the steam. Right. So steam has to escape somehow and your bread will somehow need steam to escape. It'll either make its own way if you don't score it at all and just sort of break open or you give it a direction. What you've just done is you've given it a direction and you've given it an angle, so it'll kind of open up like a book now. Right. You could also go Was straight and enough? it'll open up. Yeah, it's just fine. Cool. Great. Yeah. Come on. Oh, no. Can 
someone set a timer. <laughs> Open this now, take the lid off. It's been in there for 25 minutes at 260, 270? Yeah. Good, then turn it down with the lid off for another 20 minutes. Oh, you hot dogs, mate. In this stage, when you're cooking it with the lid off, you can check it as much as you like. Well, not too much, don't take the piss. But, <laughs> don't take the piss. <laughs> the oven's hot. But don't check it when it's in the Dutch oven. Oh, she couldn't. Look at that. It's like a wave. Great serve, man, serves up. <laughs> I think it was pretty stunning. Oh yeah. I mean, that was actually sick. It's amazing. <laughs> and you're a beginner and you've done that. <laughs> well, so yeah. that's you. I put it in the oven. <laughs> I scored it and I scored it badly. Look at that. So you see these little rips here? Bam, 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 yeah. Bam. That's sort of like the dough ripping. Yeah, and it's opening up. All the steam coming out yeah. through these little bubbles. Yeah. We've got a nice bit of scorching there, and that's yeah. very important. Yeah. Nice, different colours. You know what you call this? This is called the ear. Because it looks a bit like an ear. The, an ear? It's called an ear. Right. Well, that's quite nice. It's making a little pop crackle. That's like the nicest sound. Oh. Oh. Right. Where, we're we go, where are we going? Gotta go in the middle. Yeah? Yeah. Full on. It was bouncy. It does. Oh. Oh. Oh my days. Yeah, that's a good level, isn't it? Look at that. Look at that little cave right there. <laughs> Why is there one like mass around them? Sometimes it just happens. It's fermentation. It's a could be a shaping error. Could be that that particular bit didn't spring up in the oven in the same way the other bits do. It just happens. How soft do it is. Do you know what it looks like? A penguin. This isn't it? Yeah. Alright. Now we've got no excuses. We'll be banging out loaves like that, left, right, and centre. This this loaf has been in the fridge, it's gone through the whole process. You've been shaped it, you put it in the fridge 12 hours. Yep. So this should have the well-developed sour, sourdough flavour. Yeah. This is such a unique process and it's gonna be unique to you and yours is gonna be different to mine. Mine's gonna be different to Matt's. Everyone has such a different process and you just have to make it work for yourself. That's why there's so many different ways of doing it. And every way is a great way to do it. Don't just copy what someone else is doing. See what they're doing, take the gist of it, and then make it work for your own unique circumstances. Thank you very much, Sophia. It's been very good fun, very delicious. And um, for more information about what Sourdough Sphere does, <laughs> I love calling you Sourdough Sphere, <laughs> um, go on Instagram, at Sourdough Sophia. Wish us luck. You're good luck. You'll We're be fine. Just two absolute bad guys trying to make a <laughs> trying to make a loaf. <laughs> Alright, that was it. A extremely good loaf that we kind of made. Can we really claim it? But from an awesome instructor, Sarah and Sophia is fantastic. She's got an online course and the link is in the description below. So if you want to know more, if you want to become Master Bakers, click on that link, go do her course. Next up in this sourdough series, we're gonna be with Matt from Bread Ahead, where we try it in our kitchen as well. Dreamy. I think you're done there, buddy. <laughs> so we're learning from him, and we're also showing you us trying for dear life to make the same loaf he taught us. And subscribe to Tatcha. Uh, 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 please. Subscribe, it's got a bit of a ring to it, that, hasn't it? Subscribe to Tabcha. Uh, 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 to Tabcha.